to be completed at that time. At this time, uh, we are holding a public hearing, uh, and this is on uh, CCHIP and ICRIP public hearing. Will the uh, clerk uh, read the agenda? Item E on the agenda is the public hearing, and it reads, um, I'm sorry, item number three, public hearing to gather community input on the proposed amendments to the Center City Housing Incentive Policy, CCHIP, and the Inner City Reinvestment Infill Policy, ICRIPT. Thank you. The public hearing on the Center, the Center City Housing Incentive Policy and the Inner City Reinvestment Infill Policy is hereby opened. Anyone who wants to express their views may do so. However, comments must be limited to matters about either or both of the policies. If the speaker starts discussing any other subject or topic, he or she will be interrupted and asked to leave the podium. Okay, we have people signed up. I'll call uh, the first two people. First one is Artman Bland, followed by Layla Nee. Artman Bland, followed by Layla Neek. Give me some <laughs> seizure. I, I'm not sure on what I'm speaking on. You're talking about the C-CHIP and I-CRIP amendments. What the center that? city housing policy and the uh, inner city reinvestment policy. Well, seizure. <laughs> I paid, uh, 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 let me say this because I don't want to be off, off the subject, but I have paid tax resolutions to pay uh, our bills, our taxes off, and the tax office stole and sold our property and ignored the tax, ignored the tax office, uh, uh, the taxes resolution people paying the taxes. And uh, they stole and sold our property and promised me uh, 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 excess proceeds. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm at a standstill where I can't do anything because they haven't given me, the, and they sold it to the Iranians and, and uh, they were conveniently there to uh, be there to be, to, to have it auctioned off to them. Mr. Bland, oh. that really isn't appropriate for this hearing, but you are uh, signed up to talk under Citizens to be Heard. May I call on you later to okay. talk about all that? Right. All right, all right, because I, I wasn't clear on, I don't want to That's right. on the wrong, wrong station. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Layla Neek, followed by Mark Perez. Hello, my name is Layla Neek, and I am the property manager at the Baldwin at St. Paul Square. And so 50% of our property is selected for the San Antonio median income of the 80% units. And so a lot of our residents are pretty much uh, entry level Air Force military. Um, we also have city employees such as Idea Public School, so entry level teachers as well, counselors. Um, for the city, we have VIA bus drivers, um, we also have counselors, like I said. And so we are for bringing more people to the area. Um, in our property, about 20% of the residents don't have vehicles, so they use the scooters, which is convenient for our residents and for the environment as well. So they don't really often use their, their vehicles to, you know, go anywhere. Walking distance is, you know, to the River Center Mall is a mile. There's restaurants half a mile away, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Neek. Mark Perez, followed by Dr. Meredith McGuire. Uh, yes, as you know, my name is Mr. Mark Perez. I'm, I'm against this uh, plan amendment to come forward until we assess where these neighborhoods and who's getting this grant money. As you know, we've been having some issues with developers here in the community having an influx of uh, permitting system out there, development services in most cases. 
there's some issues with the zoning. And I know Mr. Shaw was on the zoning commission and, and if you look at when Shaw was on the zoning commission, there's some questionable uh, cases that came when he was on, the, on that board. And uh, as you know, uh, when it comes to you know these uh, grants, where the communities are gonna be located. As you know, if there's any around this Pearl Burry over here, you know, we got chemical facilities that, that, that frequent our neighborhoods that been going under, under the radar. And, and as you know, you know, we've had, uh, like I said, when you built the Victoria Courts many years ago and they had asbestos, you know, uh, I'm not too sure on the planning or anything. Do we have anybody here that, that knows about that plan amendment? No? <laughs> you know, city attorney maybe over here. But anyway, like I said, it's public safety and hopefully we have a map on where is this money going for this, uh, you know, and the neighborhoods, are the neighborhoods clean, environmental? And you know, and as you know, I've, I've been a very big critic on our environment here in our community. I'm not too sure if I got the Office of Sustainability involved, uh, the Office of uh, the Government Affairs, Jeff Coyle involved, to kind of verify these areas where y'all wanna give this grant money to, or plan amendments to. And as you know, plan amendments, it requires a, a task. And in most cases here, uh, we've been having development. In most cases, homes don't even have to come for a rezoning or any plan amendments. They get it automatically, draw off the board. You ask the city clerk, she's aware of that. Melinda Urigas, all in her staff, are knows about the undergrounds that are happening. I'm, I'm even wondering why we're having a waste of today, because it's a done deal. Yeah, Trevino, it's a done deal, <laughs> right? That's why y'all probably discussing that back there. We could ask the city attorney. But anyway, it's about public safety and hopefully this money and the developers and who's, who's, who's going to be getting that money to, to build uh, matchboxes here in the city. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of matchboxes going, growing around here in our city, very big matchboxes. And we don't have the, the educated uh, inspectors to be out there inspecting. I'm not too sure if y'all do have a committee that's going to be overlooking the funds if it does pass, you know. Not too sure, but like I said, public safety in our community, and many of y'all been giving the deaf ear, even the city attorney's office there, you know, putting these people in very dangerous situations where families could be shaken up at night. As you know, if, you know, <laughs> there's places here in the city that could, that could happen. And I was reading this one. This, uh, thank you, Ms. Thank Pettis. Dr. Meredith McGuire, followed by Ms. Gay Wright. Can you give me your name? Ms. Gay, right? Okay. Uh, Dr. Meredith McGuire, you have six minutes. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. Um, I, I, first of all, am concerned because I believe that CCHIP and ICRIP and other impact fee waivers are not a solution to San Antonio's affordable housing problems. In fact, they are a big part of the problem itself. Uh, I urge you to postpone any incentive program consideration until you've had a chance to look very carefully at what the affordable housing uh, program that uh, Maria Berriozaval was involved in. I think they are coming up with a number of very valuable recommendations and that those should be highlighted as what you need to be working on and focusing on. In the meantime, pause all impact fee waivers. The issue has to do a lot with the unaffordability of utility rates in this city. The utility rates have to go up because the costs are rising, but the fact of the matter is they disproportionately hurt uh, the residential rate payers and the ways that the rates are structured is such that it particularly disadvantages low-income households, so that we have to fix the utility rate structure before we're going to be able to protect the people who are already here and already barely able to afford their housing and their utility rates. Equity for the many San Antonio residents in, uh, who are especially vulnerable to some of the worst impacts of climate change. 
that's another really important thing that we have to be working on because we know that the, we have increasing chances of heat waves, of droughts, and so forth. And we have to make sure that the utility rates are affordable for families so that they can afford to have cooling, for example, in, in the times of heat waves, and that they can afford water despite um, drought and other problems. There are entire neighborhoods at risk due to their inability to afford a decent place to live and the cost of utilities necessary to have enough water for health and life itself, as well as enough electricity to keep cool. I urge you to closely examine the entire effects of the impact fee waivers, who benefits and who loses. When impact fees are waived, it is the existing residential ratepayers who lose. This morning I was at the meeting of the Capital Improvements Advisory Committee at SAWS. It was discussing setting new rates for impact fees to be paid by developers for future development for new housing. I learned that the existing impact fees do not cover even half of the actual costs of the new development, so that existing residents are already being forced to subsidize new development with every monthly bill. I learned that existing waivers of impact fees resulted last year in more than $3 million being paid by existing residents rather than by the developers who stand to make billions of dollars on those new developments. I learned that the developers and the real estate industry appointees to that committee are fighting hard to prevent the cost of the Vista Ridge capital investments from being included in calculating the impact fee amounts for the next 20 years or so. That is outrageous. We came to this room in council in 2014 and argued that the Vista Ridge was a terrible deal because it committed SAWS to paying for vast amounts of water that San Antonio doesn't need, but now has to pay for whether we need it or not. The developers and the real estate industry paraded before council insisting that San Antonio is growing so fast that we needed non-Edwards water for, to supply urgently. Uh, they, the figures they used per, for per capita consumption were greatly inflated. Now they are claiming that they should not have to pay for SAW's investments and that, and, and if that is allowed, it will cause a 9.84% overall rate increase that will make SAW's rates to existing residents even less affordable. Please don't force San Antonio residents to subsidize new development. Halt the impact fee waivers and focus on true economic development, which would address the housing that's affordable to the workers and the people of San Antonio. That's the only justification for any kind of incentives. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. McGuire. Don Hansen, followed by Maxwell Woodward. Woodward. Hello, my name is Don Hansen. I'm with District One. Um, and I'm also part of San Antonio Neighborhoods for Everyone. I am in support of the ICRIP and CHIP revisions. As we know, the SA tomorrow comprehensive plan the SA Corridor Plan and the Housing Task Force all specify to target more housing to transit corridors and regional centers. This helps people live near jobs and opportunity in transit. Further, the Housing Task Force specifically calls for revising CHIP to incorporate incentives for affordable housing units within developments. And the revisions, revisions to CHIP do just that. Most of you voted to approve each of these plans and policies. Why would we delay? This does exactly what every plan calls for, including the task force. Some of the concerns you might hear are about displacement. And the housing task force partnered with NELCAB last year to complete a vulnerability assessment of the neighborhoods. And this is a good starting point to inform current and future policies. Additionally, the housing and neighborhood services are conducting a displacement study. And the CHIP has a displacement affidavit attached to it. So this seems like the city staff is addressing some of these concerns. An economic displacement happens when rising rents force tenants to move elsewhere. Preservation or slowing down that building of housing, which is the C-CHIP has already halted housing, does not reduce displa displacement. It only rearranges it where displacement happens. 
and can increase its occurrence because it adds no new housing to the city's stock and does nothing to relieve the demand for housing. Um, recent research even confirms this. E economists have found that displacement is more than twice as likely in low-income census tracts with little market rate housing construction than in tracts with high construction levels. And subsidizing below market rate housing curbs displacement even more. Researchers at Berkeley recently found that the effect of subsidized units in reducing the probability of displacement to be, added, to be more than double the effect of market rate units. So tackling displacement requires building lots and lots of new housing and providing support for communities that are most vulnerable to change. Vulnerable communities need more housing, need more than just housing alone to equitably, equitably address displacement pressures. Such cases warrant locally targeted preservation of low-cost housing, a concentration of new subsidized housing, or other public investment and incentives to stabilize vulnerable communities. Such interventions must be supplemented with increases in housing construction in other areas of the city, and CCHIP is a good start to this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hansen. <clears throat> Maxwell Woodward, followed by Peter French. Hello. Uh, my name is Max Woodward. Thank you all for letting me speak. I'm a San Antonio native, a small business owner, the president of the Uptown Neighborhood Association, chairman of the FRED committee, that's a business owners group on FRED Road, and also uh, sit on the planning committee for the Midtown Regional Center. At least I did till last May when a organized group of wealthy property owners uh, stormed a meeting and basically put that process to a halt, uh, something that was very disenfranchising to me as a young person excited to be involved and taking on my civic duties. But uh, this underlined to me uh, a big issue, and that's the, the danger of neighborhood associations operating like homeowners associations homeowners associations being comprised of property owners with legal authority to enforce rules, regulations that focus on restrictions, building and traffic issues. It sounds to me a lot like neighborhood associations in San Antonio's urban core, and they use NCDs and historic designations, among other code enforcement tactics to enforce their own agenda. Uh, Second, these neighborhood associations have historically been used as lobbying tools to funnel resources to affluent neighborhoods. It's a complicated process, these city processes, and uh, stands to reason that wealthy, retired property owners have more time to engage than the most vulnerable populations, which are working class, largely tenant populations. Uh, finally, uh, kind of underlining their their organization and political savvy, a coalition of neighborhoods was formed last year and, and basically represents the equivalent of a super PAC in the way of local lobbying. Their current agenda, which thankfully you guys shut down their request to remove MF33 from the neighborhood plans just a few weeks ago, this would have served to artificially limit the housing stock, which would result in a accelerating the increase in values of these neighborhoods. I'd like to say, uh, as a neighborhood association president and property owner, that this agenda actually serves my bottom line. Uh, for them to limit housing stock makes mine that much more valuable. But again, like I said, this is at the expense of our most vulnerable populations. So in closing, I support the amendment to the C-CHIP policies as it has been working to add housing. We need housing in every shape, size, and form, even if it's not for vulnerable populations. It takes pressure off our urban neighborhoods to have these new projects. I'm over time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Woodward. Uh, Peter French, followed by Liz Franklin. Good evening, I'm Peter French. Um, would urge you all to uh, vote for the ICRIP and CCHIP amendment. Uh, the moratorium on CCHIP has had um, a very clear effect of cooling uh, new construction of housing, and San Antonio needs new housing throughout Loop 410, 
in the inner city right now today, every unit of housing creates de facto unit of affordable housing, new housing, net new housing is the goal, needs to be the goal. I would encourage you also to pursue a very robust affordable housing policy, but I would not stop this process to achieve that process. These things are separate, they're distinct. I spent time, I worked on the neighborhood housing task force on the equitable neighborhood working group. Um, and in places like that, and as assistant city manager Lori Houston said today during the B session, there have been information sessions happening in small groups, in large groups, as part of the neighborhood housing task force work, as part of the uh, mayor's annual housing summit. This conversation is happening. Uh, this conversation is happening publicly, it's happening privately. Uh, it is not as if these policies were created in a vacuum. I don't think that's a fair way to categorize them. And I don't believe it's the right thing for San Antonio to defer uh, approving these policies, which are proven to produce new housing, um, in the pursuit of a separate and distinct goal. So again, please vote for iCRIP and CHIP. Please also pursue uh, an affordable housing policy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. French. Liz Franklin, followed by Lynn Knappick. Liz Franklin, uh, I live in District 2. I hate going behind Peter French. He's so smart. The neighborhood. He did say something that was very compelling. There's a couple of things he said that were compelling. First of all, I'm not, a, I'm not against CHIP. I'm just against it tomorrow. Okay? Uh, you're right. There's been conversations all over the place. Likely those conversations didn't get down to the people that are most impacted and most affected and most critically need good answers about we're not going to be displaced and what happens when we are because we haven't had a good track record of, not a, of addressing that. We haven't had a good track record of that in this city, okay, um, so far. But I'm optimistic. I think we can change the ship any time. But Cruz knows ships take a long time to turn around, so we have to start right now. Um, you know, the other thing is, is I look at all of the community leaders that come out here that have years and years of putting their time and their effort in from the underserved for the underserved and the marginalized. And if they say do the study and we arbitrarily don't think we need the study, why do you ask them to be on anything? They spend countless hours trying to understand how all of this could work to the best benefit. And you know, lastly, I'm just gonna say, if a market value development project cannot get off the ground for a month, three months, or six months until we have another piece in there that will assure that the people that are most decidedly going to be displaced have avenues and other ways of, be, we have other ways of mitigating that, that, maybe that's not the project that belongs here. Giving them money and incentives for that just because we need housing is just not the answer. We're still going to need housing. The most vulnerable populations will continue to need housing. We can address both at the same time. It's walking and chewing gum at the same time. And with that, I'll say I wish you all a happy holiday. Sorry, but I'm a little annoyed because it shouldn't be going to this conversation. You have many respected community leaders putting in a lot of time and effort saying, do the study. Wait, wait, we don't have to do this right this second. Okay, thanks. Happy holidays, Ms. Franklin. Uh, Ms. Lynn Knappick, followed by Jack Finger. Good evening. My name is Lynn Knappick, and I am a downtowner. I live at Pearl, and I have uh, for the past eight years. Um, I owned a condo in Alamo Heights before I moved back to the suburbs, but I was anxious to get back downtown. And I discovered Pearl by going 
to the museum reach one day and decided that's where I needed to uh, check out. So eight years later and I'm still there, but more importantly, I am a downtowner and being one is a joy. There's an energy and a synergy among the people downtown that I've never felt anywhere that I've lived. Uh, everyone is a neighbor, no matter what part of downtown they are in. Uh, and every time you walk out your door, you meet somebody new and find new friends. What I really love about being a downtowner, though, is the opportunity to be part of making our city better every day. And I guess you could say I've become a downtown activist. First, it was the Midtown uh, Breckenridge planning uh, as I was moving to Pearl and then SA 2020 and then Hemisphere planning meetings and TCI and Complete Streets, Downtown Residents Association, Centro membership, uh, the, SA, the San Antonio Conservation Society and more. But I've become part of all of this because I live downtown. If I didn't live downtown, I wouldn't be part of it. So in uh, 2014, I was appointed by Mayor Taylor to the Midtown TERS. Uh, serving on that board has helped me understand the importance and the implementation process of the C-CHIP and the ICRIP programs. These programs have certainly been instrumental in creating the vibrant downtown that we all enjoy. I've marveled at so much happening over the past eight years. And fortunately, as a realtor and a ULI member, I've had the opportunity to visit so many of the properties receiving these tax incentives. But having served on the, also on the stable, equitable, and resilient neighborhood technical working group of the Mayor's Housing Task Force, I understand the need to rethink the incentives provided through CHIP and ICRIP. It appears the proposed updates uh, take a thoughtful approach to the current and future housing needs. Certainly, we need to encourage construction of affordable housing with the use of these funds. And recently, the members of the Midtown TERS were very pleased to approve funding for the Museum Reach Lofts, an affordable multifamily project to be located across from SAMA and just a block from the San Antonio River. We certainly need more projects like these in all parts of the town, but especially in the inner city. So I know there are those who would like to have the vote delayed for final approval of the revised program until certain research results can be collected, but I also know that there are probably projects waiting in the wings to make use of the programs. So I suppose my hope would be that we can find a solution to satisfy everyone to get the new program approved as soon as possible and help take care of both situations. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Knappick. Jack Finger. Jack Finger, Emis Rulos, Emis Rulos, Jack, uh, Mr. Jack Sanford, Mr. Sanford will be followed by Richard Acosta. Good evening, my name is Jack Sanford and I'm a member of the Alta Vista Neighborhood Association, which is a member of the Tier 1 Neighborhood Coalition. I am also a member of San Antonio Neighbors for Everyone, and I would ask that you vote for these amendments on C-CHIP tonight. We need more housing in this city. That's the only way that we're going to avoid displacing people in our urban neighborhoods, um, in our urban core, in the Tier 1 neighborhoods, is to have more housing for all the people that want to live in these areas. They're hot areas, people want to live there, people are ge being displaced because there's nowhere to live except for these old homes that they have to fix up. Um, thank you very much for the meetings that you had on C-CHIP. I was happy to attend a couple of those. Um, I know some people have said, you know, there wasn't a public process. You had public meetings. I guess this is a thank you to city staff that held those meetings. Um, it was a great process. We gave input. Um, we're excited to see this move forward. And in talking to developers, they, this is a key program in getting housing built. And without this, even in the moratorium, on this program, so many projects have gone unbuilt that could have added to our housing stock and helped our um, housing shortage. Uh, we're in a good position now. We're not Austin, we're not Seattle, San Francisco yet, but we can take advantage of our position now and start building housing so that we never get that, so we can maintain our affordable status, as well as um, helping to move um, inequality, spread that around. This is a very geographically unequal city, and if we can build more housing in these cores, like we've talked about, affordable housing, as opposed to, uh, we, we can help spread some of this 
um, inequality, uh, not spread the inequality around, but I think you understand what I'm saying, that we can reduce the geographic disparities uh, in income levels that we have now. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Sanford. Richard Acosta? Mr. Acosta will be followed by Yanith Flores. Thank you very much. My name is Richard Costa with My City is My Home, Mi Ciudad is Mi Casa. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization that started as a direct result of the Mayor's Housing Task Force. Um, we are, well, to say one of the things, this is the second time I've spoken in front of you, and that was too um, in support of the Mayor's Housing Task Force. And one thing that we do is we help people protest property taxes for free throughout San Antonio. I've helped every, people in every single one of your districts protest their property taxes for free. The other thing we want to do is build homes for under 100 thousand dollars or less a single family homes I can't I, I, I'm gonna have a hard time doing that right now because I want to build in district 5 and um, it, uh, a lot of those the the policy is a point uh, the thing that we want to rezone is like a 0.15 lot is an acre and turn and reply to like a 0 0.04 which would lower down the would change the zoning on that which I believe I won't be able to apply for C chip. It might be another way for me to apply uh, through getting maybe city vote, city council vote, but that's something that's going to affect us from being able to get some of those incentives. So I just want to point that out. Under the Mayor Housing uh, Task Force report, there's 32,000 units that need to be built for 30% AMI. Um, out of the 7,500 units, that's kind of a mix of 30 to 60. I kind of ask, I ask why isn't 30% AMI the point of target of those 7,500 units that we're hoping to add on to the to city count uh, to the C chip program, um, I asked why are we basing our AMIs off of HUD uh, requirements instead of, of San Antonio requirements of uh, a of what we think a, a AMI is for a direct result of a of San Antonio. So I asked why don't we why aren't, is that not our target rate and. I, I, I just, I'm not, I'm for C-CHIP, uh, we, 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 we're for the program and everything, we just, why is it being rushed? Why can't we have an, uh, enough time to figure out what's going on, what's the, all the information? I think that I'm pretty intelligent when it comes to what's going on in affordable housing. I go to like three meetings a day uh, regarding housing and I'm learning a lot in the last hour or two during the session B. And if I have a hard time figuring out all the ins and outs of what's going on, our public ha has a hard time. And one of the, the things that came out of the Mayor's Housing Task Force is accountability. Where is the chance for the public, for the city to be accountable to the public, giving us enough time to look and understand what was going to be out of our city dollars and for probably a great program. And I 100%, like I said, I'm for C-CHIP and everything, but are, are, where is the public engagement? Where do we have enough time to be engaged? And that's really what, what I'm asking for. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Acosta. Yanith Flores, followed by Michael Taylor. Uh, what's your name, sir? Got it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rojas. Due to its, my name is Yanet Flores. Um, due to its potentially incriminatory, discriminatory impact, we request that the City Council postpone consideration of the Center City Housing Info Policy, otherwise known as CCHIP program, until a more thorough public process has been put in place. The city's year-long CCHIP moratorium provided an opportunity for San Antonio to consider whether its program is whether this program is necessary to achieve goals for residential development, and if so, how the it can be done while keeping downtown San Antonio an accessible place for people, an accessible living space. Um, I do have some comments from the B session that I just quickly want to touch on. Um, I think the description of the TXB study um, that Lori mentioned um, might have left out some really important points. So the TXP study on C-CHIP impact does note that development downtown is likely more feasible now than when C-CHIP was created in 2012. Financial in incentives are not required nor necessary to spur downtown development. 
that is noted in the study. We are concerned that CHIP prioritizes development without concern for the indirect displacement of existing low-income communities of color who live in the relevant geographic areas. The housing task force identified important goals for the city, especially the need for housing affordable or residents living at 60% or below the area medium income, um, an income that, I, or an average that I think we all agree might be incredibly inaccurate. While living, while level three and the affordable housing fund contribute to housing for residents at and below 60% AMI, the housing created will likely be outside of levels one and two and not increase opportunity and choice for low income and working class folks near and in the downtown area. If the city of San Antonio plans to invest in new development at the expense of local taxpayers, we believe the city must promote policies that increase genuine affordability, protect existing communities, and mitigate an inedible effect, the effects of displacement. The proposed revisions do not achieve the important objectives that I just listed. The CHIP coverage areas include neighborhoods with vibrant history and incredibly valuable communities. Many of these residents in level two and low are low income, working class, Latinx, or black. We anticipate the development of new higher priced housing in these areas will increase rents of the surrounding properties, increasing the cost burden on existing residents and displacing many of them out of the inner city or even perhaps the city of San Antonio. Further, Developers may opt out of accessible affordability in level two by building higher than five stories. Again, referring back to the TXP analysis, analysis, it states that incentives are primarily beneficial for building multifamily housing above four, four to five stories. Developers will likely capitalize on the opportunity for incentives to build vertically and generate a greater profit. Um, maybe we can ask them, they're all sitting behind me. Um, in addition, of level three may also cause further displacement uh, of communities of color as affordable housing is built outside of the urban core, core while more market rate housing is built in the ur urban core. The displacement of residents of color due to a city incentivized housing policy may violate the Fair Housing Act. Development through C through CHIP projects will disproportionately affect low-income residents of color and likely steer them to other racially segregated areas, increasing segregation in the city. Before taking the final vote on CHIP, we asked the city of San Antonio to seriously consider the potential effects of the CHIP program, including, dis including the impacts that this will have on our communities, uh, to revamp the program so that it includes housing for people that are living below 60% AMI. We also ask for a community impact study to be done prior to a C-CHIP vote, and I know that we cannot get that done by 9 a.m. tomorrow. We ask that you center those that are most vulnerable in this city, and that you act with their well-being in mind, that you act compassionately, and that you center the needs of our community always. Uh, sincerely, Texas Housers, uh, Esperanza Peace and Justice Center, the West Side Preservation Alliance, the West Side Historic Neighborhood Association, and the San Antonio chapter of the Poor People's Campaign. Gracias. Thank you, Ms. Flores. Michael Taylor, followed by Susana Segura. Michael Taylor, Habitat for Humanity of San Antonio. Um, I just wanted to share a little bit about how these programs um, help provide housing for uh, low and very low income families in San Antonio, um, and also, share some of the some of the problems with with not um, moving these programs forward um, but first I wanted to um, thank Lori and, and Veronica and their staff for working with the nonprofit housing providers um, on the policy to try and make it more useful for us uh, we've always been a big user of the policy and and they've actually found ways to make it even more beneficial um, for, for the families we serve um, so we now with the new policy will have a dedicated pot of funds uh, for the fee waiver programs, wh which will ensure um, availability for affordable housing. Um, and also the new policy uh, removes the impact fee cap of $5,000. So this is gonna allow the full $6,852 that we spend on impact fees per house uh, to be waived. Um, and this is gonna increase the labor costs and will actually um, give us the certainty we need to build three additional houses next year. 
Um, and as far as the CHIP policy goes, we're very excited about the new affordable housing fund. Um, we think that that has the potential to um, generate a lot of revenue that will help us in the future to produce affordable housing. Um, the families we serve really need these fee waivers. Um, we need them to keep home ownership affordable. Um, and I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the family that you saw in the photo um, at the B session presentation today. Um, this is one of our typical home buyers. It's a family of five. Um, the husband and father works in food manufacturing. He's worked for the same company for seven years. Um, the family income is $28,235 a year. This is 39% um, of area median income. They're buying a four bedroom, two bathroom house, 1,200 square feet uh, for $80,000. And their monthly payment is gonna be $582 a month, 0% interest uh, loan. Um, that includes property taxes and insurance. And this is not a one-off. Um, just under half of the families that we served, uh, that we built houses for this year, had incomes between 30% and 50% of AMI. Um, and we're continuing to build, but we're at risk of having to delay our houses um, if we don't have these waivers in place. So we have eight homes under construction for next year that we've already started, um, and we'll be starting 14 more. Uh, without these waivers, we're gonna have to raise $150,000 uh, to cover impact fees and city permit fees. That's not a popular ask from any donor, so that would be a very big challenge. Um, so we ask you all to move forward with the policy and approving it as is. Thank you, Mr. Thank Taylor. You. So Su Susana Segura, followed by Sarah Gold. Hello, my name is Susana. I just want to ask that you please delay the C-CHIP vote. I also want to echo something that I heard Councilman Courage say. No one wants to stay in a low income situation, but the reality is that San Antonio's economy is based on the tourism industry, and none of y'all that are sitting here in front of me have done anything to make sure that all of these hotels downtown are paying their workers a living wage. That's the truth. I have not seen any one of you move any policy forward to do that. So what happens is the poorest of the poor work in hotels. Why do people come back to San Antonio? Because we're largely Latinos, because we're hospitable, because we fold your clothes, clean your beds, clean your rooms, do your toilets, cook your food. And we don't get paid enough to even own a car. Why does VIA run the largest number of bus lines through the west side of San Antonio? Because people can't even afford to purchase a car. That's why. And that's the primary workforce is coming from the poorest zip code. That's your zip code, Shirley. That's your district, District 5. I've been working in your district for 27 years. I've been in and out of homes. I've raised people's children, and they're not making money. They're not even making it. There are two jobs, two and a half jobs working. That's how, you know how many hours that is? Like people can't even spend time with their families. I heard you say earlier that if somebody got into a wheelchair situation, that it would be so much cheaper for them to knock their house down and rebuild it new. That is a lie. You live in the most economically segregated district in San Antonio. The city of San Antonio, all of the city of San Antonio has been listed as one of the most economically segregated cities in the nation. The city of San Antonio has been described as one of the poorest cities in the nation. What are you doing to stop that? You live in a district that is heavily redlined and deed restricted that was primarily segregated for Mexicans and African Americans. That's the truth. So if I were an 85 year old woman that had to be in a wheelchair, would I actually tear down my house and rebuild it new? and my house is only valued at $35,000, would I do that? No, I'd probably divest myself of my house, move into a senior housing situation, and give my kids my money if I had it. And since I don't have kids, I'd probably just give it to any nonprofit, and then I would get on housing. That's what would happen. Thank you, Ms. Segura. Sarah Gold. Ms. Gold will be followed by 
Jimena Urutias Rojas. Urutia Rojas. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Hi, my name is Sarah Gould. I'm a resident of District 7 and a member of the San Antonio chapter of the Poor People's Campaign which is a national call for moral revival that has united tens of thousands of people across the country to challenge the evils of systemic racism, poverty, the war economy, ecological devastation, and the nation's distorted morality. The Poor People's Campaign believes in the dismantling of unjust systems that exploit poor communities and communities of color. We also believe that people should not live in or die from poverty in the richest nation ever to exist. Housing is a prominent issue in the Poor People's Campaign. In 2016, there was no state or county in the nation where someone earning the federal minimum wage could afford a two-bedroom apartment at market rent. Only one in four of those eligible to receive federal housing assistance actually do so. This has precipitated a structural housing crisis with 2.5 to 3.5 million people who are living in shelters, transitional housing centers, and tent cities. This population includes a significant number of women, children, LGBTQIA youth, veterans, and the elderly. One of the Poor People's Campaign demands is that the wealthy and corporations pay for their fair share of our country's urgent needs around decent and affordable housing, free public education, a robust social safety net, and social security. At the San Antonio chapter of the Poor People's Campaign, we are concerned that CHIP is being considered for renewal before the completion of a citywide displacement policy, before the affordable housing plan is in place, and without a coordinated housing system in place. We are also concerned that the definition of affordability does not meet the realities of San Antonio incomes and that not enough residents in the seed chip area or the adjacent areas, which surely will be impacted, have been engaged for feedback. Given that it's the holiday season, I want to leave you with this. Whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gould. Warren Wilkinson, followed by Bill Schoen. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Um, I'm Warren Wilkinson, Executive Director of Central San Antonio. Um, I ask that you support um, uh, these proposed updates to the CCHIP and the ICRIP uh, program. Uh, these programs, uh, luckily the city had the uh, insight or the foresight to uh, pass these programs some time ago and the insight now to tweak them uh, so that they're more effective. Uh, together, these programs encourage development with good guardrails uh, limits, guardrail limits. They address affordable housing. They provide consistent, predictable policies regarding available incentives. Uh, they promote historic uh, rehabilitation with appropriate oversight. Uh, they uh, promote development of legacy businesses, uh, housing density, development for small businesses, and they provide reevaluation in two years. These programs have been a success, and I hope you approve those tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilkinson. Bill Schoen, followed by Larnzell Harper. Thank you, Mayor, City Council people. I'm Bill Schoen with Pearl and Silver Ventures. I want to put this conversation in context because I feel like sometimes it's been taken out of context, the whole idea of C-CHIP. Think about San Antonio from 1985 forward and the lack of any residential development, any office development, basically a 30-year period where people were leaving downtown. Hotel development, great, uh, great visitor city but our downtown became somewhat one-dimensional. There was a decision made to change that. CCHIP was passed, and since that time, 7,500, more or less, new residential units, 1.7 million square feet of new office spaces under construction right now. 
That's one thing that's not talked about much because we're talking about thinking about CHIP as a housing instrument. It's an economic development tool, and it's made a huge, huge difference. Strongly encourage you to pass it. I will share with you, as a developer, a personal opinion that I'm concerned that it might have been watered down a bit. I think that you may see that it doesn't incentivize development as much as we hope that it will. I hope that if that turns out to be the case that you'll revisit it and reconsider it. I want to put another thing in context, and I think this is really important because oftentimes what we hear and what we read in the papers is they stretch out, if, if there's, a, if there's a, a tax abatement, take that number and stretch it out for 10 or 15 years, and that's a huge number, and they say, look at that developer, he's been given this much. When the Pearl property was acquired in 2002, we paid less than $150,000 in ad valorem taxes on the property. Less than $150,000. Since we have been doing what we're doing, and we have been the beneficiary of CCHIP, since we've been doing what we're doing, last year we paid about $6.4 million in ad valorem taxes. And that's not only to the city, that's to everybody. $6.4 million last year, and that's year after year after year, and we get 783000 back as a result of CCHIP. Now, when you think about CCHIP as an investment, if you were that kind of investor and you said, well, I can, I can take $150,000, turn it to $6.4 million, and I give 700000 back, that's one hell of an investment. Strongly, strongly encourage you to, to support it. Let's keep turning. And at the same time, before I run out of time, I want to share that we share the concerns of others that housing affordability is a huge issue here, and we want to help solve them. We at Silver are going to turn our attention toward affordable housing, and hopefully with you, we can, we can find a solution together. It's not either or. It's both. It's CHIP and economic development and finding solutions to affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schoen. Larzell Harper, followed by John Cooley. Good evening, Mayor Nierenberg, members of the City Council. My name is Lawrence Zoe Harper. I live downtown. I am a resident of 1221 Broadway. Yes, I am one of the 66 people per day who relocated to San Antonio, and this beautiful city is now my home. I do not hesitate to admit relocating to a new city has challenges and it also has opportunities. My journey in San Antonio did not begin as a downtown resident. My first apartment was in an area of town that is not as walkable as downtown. And I admit, even today, sometimes I'm homesick for my family. However, the vibrancy of my downtown neighborhood provides me a deeper connection because the river walk is right outside my doorsteps. I sincerely recommend the downtown resident to each resident, to each, the downtown experience to each resident. Locals can experience the exact same downtown experience to those as myself who relocated or are visitors. I love living downtown and having the opportunity to experience events, festivals, museums, restaurants, concerts, everything. I hope you vote to approve the recommended updates to the CCHIP and the ICRIP so others can also have this welcoming experience as I. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you, Mr. Harper. John Cooley, followed by Christian Reed Ogba. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council. My name is John Cooley. I'm the COO of Terramark Urban Homes. Uh, I'm here today asking your support for these proposed changes to the CCHIP and the ICRIP. Termark focuses on attainable, efficient, medium density housing clusters in and around the urban core of San Antonio. Our core demographics of, of home, new homeowners are young couples, empty nesters, uh, a good amount of military. We've completed eight projects currently under this, uh, what was the original C-CHIP program. Uh, that has amounted to uh, almost 100 new homes for sale in the urban core. We're, we're a little bit atypical in that uh, it's really a predominant multifamily rental program. We've been able to use it to build for sale houses and uh, achieve home ownership for these, uh, these projects. 
the average sales price of these homes, uh, while housing, housing prices have gone up, is still around 250,000, which if you'll you know, pull up Zillow when you get a chance and see how many new homes are being built in the urban downtown area under $200,000, it's very, very few. Uh, one of the things that this program, uh, and, and Mr. Schoen did an excellent job of explaining it, is the original C-CHIP program and the economic development and the incentivization to invest in these parts of town that had not seen investment for a long period of time. Uh, by all standards, this program is uh, and has been a success. Uh, he also pointed out the, the headline that's often written where the city is giving X number of dollars to a development or a developer to, to bring this project to fruition. Um, you know, it's, it's the criticism levied against that program is pretty simple, but the rebuttal is, is somewhat more nuanced and complex. So while that money is part of that abatement, it, it takes the investment in order to achieve it. And, and Mr. Schoen outlined uh, spot on how that investment creates tremendous growth for not just the city, but also the flood districts, the hospital districts, the school district, um, all of which receive the benefit of this economic development far and beyond any cost that it may have to the city. I mean, this program makes money for the city full stop. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the numbers are impressive and, and CCGO and staff did a fantastic job, I think, in outlining it. Um, I would just ask that this program be continued even with the economic or even with the uh, affordable housing uh, modifications to it, but the affordable housing program has to be somewhat separate and, and looked at in, in much more detail than just this uh, modification to seed chip and I've crept today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cooley. Christian Reed Ogba. Hello. My name is Christian Reed Ogba. I'm an advocate for modern uses of public and shared transportation, access for transplant entrepreneurs, and downtown living. I stand with Central Partnership San Antonio, the Baldwin, and NRP group to ask that you approve changes to C-CHIP and, and launch systems to use C-CHIP as an economic development tool. I'm not your average low-income housing resident. I've benefited from the use of lower rates for larger spaces to bootstrap my business. I'm an entrepreneur who took advantage of my ability to access mixed income developments as a two-time resident of NRP pro properties like the Garden at San Juan Square in District 5 and the Baldwin in District 2. Um, special designations have given me room to build a solid infrastructure for my PR firm. My and my husband's methods were definitely an anom anomaly um, as we shared our story during the task force early this year. Um, and given the media fanfare we received, I like to think we introduced another sustainable facet to pursuing this affordable housing policy to spark more economic impact among minority residents. Now, as a downtown adjacent resident, I feel more connected, not displaced, to the evolving culture of the city. I recently signed a lease in an historic development on 110 Broadway where I, be, where I will be able to live affordably within walking distance, scooting distance, or busing distance from my affordable office space is one of the business is one of the benefits I boast to others like me. Studies have shown San Antonio will see a large new population of transplants in the coming years who will require housing options that can level up their globally minded goal plans. I urge you all to act swiftly to nurture decision makers like I and my husband as we stay in San Antonio, bridge communities, develop our businesses, create jobs, and help curate an accommodating and sustainable community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reed, Agba. Okay, having heard all comments from those citizens wishing to be heard on the C-CHIP and I-CRIP policies, this public hearing is hereby closed. I'll now proceed uh, with the regularly scheduled citizens to be heard, and we'll begin I'll call the first name in the order. Please come forward, and I'll call the second uh, person signed up if you can prepare to come forward. Uh, first citizen signed up to speak is Mr. Jess Mays, followed by 